the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Welcome back to The Cube's coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, your host of The Cube here. And it's Tech Week. Amazon Web Services is having their financial symposium here. And we've got a great guest, Malcolm DeMeo, Global Vice President, Financial Services Institute with NVIDIA. Pleased to have you on, Malcolm. Thanks for coming on. And again, congratulations to everyone at the NVIDIA team and company for just the rise of greatness on a performing stock, company, software, hardware. It's a systems revolution. You guys are leading the way, so props to you guys. Yeah, thank you, John. It's great to be here with you. So, you know, we're now living in a world where um, there's some time, we're gonna, have, we're gonna look at this moment in time and say, we have now crossed over an inflection point of massive platform shift. Hard to say. Gen 1 cloud, we saw it happen, SaaS happened, beautiful things are happening. Now with generative AI, you're starting to see, and with all the success of these new workloads, a new net new category is emerging. Generative AI, Jensen Wong, your CEO said on stage, this is a new category. It's generating things. So you're starting to see an entire application market switch over mm -hmm. from pre-existing workloads or getting retrofitted with generative AI to new ones coming online. This is, this is going to be a Cambrian explosion of workloads. Excellent. But under the hood is the systems That's right. that run it. And you guys are part of that, not just GPUs. A Correct. collection of things. Uh, absolutely. How do you guys feel right now? What's the, what's the impact on the financial services industry as you look at the landscape with now this accelerated disruptive enablement? It's going to disrupt, but it's going to enable. So that's a good thing. So, John, uh, that financial services as an industry has been working with, working with AI for a couple of decades. So AI is not new to financial services. Uh, they have put in place multiple lines of defense, very good governance. Uh, they've calibrated their control framework in order to make sure that they're using AI responsibly and safely. Generative AI, as you just right correctly pointed out, is not another tool in the toolkit. It is a tsunami-sized wave of, of innovation, disruptive innovation. And in financial services, there are, it, between the front office, middle office, back office, there are literally hundreds of opportunities for firms to leverage generative AI to improve productivity, to improve operational efficiency, and to drive new revenue streams. But they can't do that on their existing systems. They need to transform their data centers, as Jensen likes to say, to AI factories. And an AI factory is a combination of a complete stack of a, a completely new stack of systems, all right, and that's hardware, software, and and development platforms, uh, and and uh, it's also leveraging open source models uh, that they that financials or or APIs or or open APIs, uh, and it and then finally it's having the the stack in place. Uh, and so what NVIDIA has done is we've built a complete full stack platform to help financial services to tackle this. It's interesting. It's like um, before we came on camera, you were saying there's now more workloads. You know, AI is just a workload. It's a big workload. It eats a lot of <laughs> minutes, as they say, on the GPU clock. Uh, but it's not just the GPUs. It, you're seeing the, uh, the packaging of systems. AI factories aren't, isn't your data center. Yes, yesterday, it's different. It's still kind of a data center. It's just hosted cloud, maybe on-premise or hybrid. But it's changing how that infrastructure is going to work. It, the game is still the same. Provide as much compute as possible That's right. to power the software, ultimately, and data software are merging. So, so in this nexus, uh, what is going away? So disruption means disruption. Enablement means value creation. Okay, so great. Disruption, what gets disrupted? What well, goes away? What comes in? Yeah, no, it's a great question. The first thing that goes away is yesterday's computers. Mm -hmm. And what's happening under the covers, and this has really been obfuscated by cloud. Cloud is, has really saved the day. Uh, Moore's law, or, or maybe said differently, CPU scaling has ended. And uh, if, you look at, if you look at how Jensen presents this, we have, de we have delivered a 1,000x speed up in the last eight years in our accelerated compute platform. Compare that on a chart with CPU, it's almost a flat line. CPU scaling is almost flatlined, almost, almost not living. 
And so when you have software as demanding as generative AI is models have grown 3,600x in the last 10 years. Data has exploded to some of our customers have exabyte size data sets and uh, the transaction volume just continues to grow. So as we build faster, uh, a faster accelerated compute platform, the software becomes more demanding. Yesterday's computers are going to go away and, and firms have to decide where are they going to do this? Are they going to do this in their data centers or are they going to do this in cloud? Well, Malcolm, I'll tell you, we, we are totally on that religion as well. One of the things that we are speculating in our thesis and our CUBE research team is that as you guys and the industry gets and gets that acceleration hardware software combination at the infrastructure chip and infrastructure level going faster and getting that up to speed to a steady state, it's going to flip to the next layer on the stack, which is the data layer. The middle the middleware now becomes data and software, right? So, okay, so then you're going to see change there. So financial services has very always been data-centric. Oh, yeah. I mean, data, data, data. But it's also a cutthroat market. I mean, you've got to, you've got to survive. That's highly competitive. Data will be that, that piece. As you look at the landscape, how are, how are the companies dealing with this opportunity to use their data, not as an ingredient to some app, but natively in the application itself? Because they're in the data business. The products are data. Mm -hmm. So as the world starts to have a product management view of data, it just changes a little bit the, 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 the scope of what they do, but the impact <laughs> is cash in the bank for them, getting more customers, where data becomes the product. So I think, what's, yeah, your, what's your reaction to that? Well, so data's always been the problem. It's always been one of their challenges. Uh, it's not a new challenge. Uh, it was a big challenge in the 90s when I was at Teradata. Uh, having a high quality data set is super important in order to be able to have a high quality model, AI model. And the leading firms have been working hard on this. They're not, they, they, this isn't a new challenge. They've been working hard on it. Uh, what are they doing? They're, they're building these large AI ready data sets that they can train with. What's an AI ready data set look like? Today, one of the big differences is yesterday, yesterday being in the last couple of decades, it was tabular data. This was uh, yeah, numeric data for the most part. Now, now with generative AI, which understands text, understands video, understands images, uh, is multimodal, you can, you can look at alternative data. For example, in the trading industry, in the trading segment, mm -hmm. uh, traders have been uh, using tabular data for, for a decade or so mm -hmm. to look for signals, profit signals, which they call alpha. Uh, and then they pursue this. This is how they build, how they, and, and it is a zero sum game. So somebody wins, somebody loses. But uh, now they have the opportunity to use large language model yeah. to do the same thing, to identify correlations that none of us would ever notice uh, in large, vast volumes of unstructured. We just had a customer on Amazon on before you came on um, SP 500 team, Global Insight Energy, oil and tech killer app they built with on Amazon. GPUs were a big part of that uh, to accelerate that platform on the inference side. Uh, but that highlights what you're getting at, which is the AI is at the forefront of this content app creation. Because data is now content. Again, Jensen, your CEO, talks about content. We're in generative content mode, token economies, using tokens. Well, as yeah, a, as if you think about that, back to your previous question, what's going away? The software that we use today, and Jensen correctly points this out, is uh, instruction based. It's it's coded by a half a percent of the world's population, and uh, these rules are they're br they're they're pre-programmed. In they're inflexible. Yeah. Some if you want to change something, it, it it doesn't learn on the fly. You have to go in and actually make the changes. Generative AI not only generates content but learns in an unsupervised way. So learns yeah. from feeding it data. Yeah. And so uh, another thing that you'll see happening is this new way of creating software is going to, it's going to start, we're going to start by paving over or, or optimizing today's workflows, right? So we're, yeah. going to, we're going to do things the same way with the new technology. But you're going to see startups, we, we're seeing startups that are already building AI native solutions. Yeah. Um, and, and, one and, that the, text, and that tech stack is looking different than what it was and, and, and it has to because we have a, we have a, power, a worldwide power, cons uh, power uh, crisis. And uh, one of the other things that Jensen will put up is, uh, and we're very proud of this, is that in the last 
eight to 10 years, ex the accelerated compute platform has reduced the amount of power needed to drive a workload by 350x. 350x. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. Uh, in 2012, we built a supercomputer called, I think it was called Atlas or Titan, maybe Titan. 17,000 GPUs, took up a tennis court, uh, 10 megawatts-ish of power, a little under 10 megawatts of power. <laughs> A 20 petaflops. Nuclear power plant bolted 20, onto it. 20, 20, <laughs> petaflop, 20 yeah. petaflops of AI can yeah. performance. Today, Blackwell, which is now in production, yeah. uh, it's this big, all right? B Blackwell consumes several kilowatts of power, takes up this much room. That's how far things have come. 350x reduction yeah. in the use of power. Yeah. And so that's going to enable uh, organizations to do more with less. And as, and as we like to say, the more you buy, the more you save. That's transformational to all potential everyday users. That is just the impact of that scale uh, brings it. And this really highlights this, to me, what's revolutionary about this industry right now. And to your point, it's going to revolutionize the interactions that users have with supercomputers. Because now you're, we're seeing as supercomputing is mainstream. It's in the cloud. It could be a clustered set of clustered systems. It's available to everyone on the planet. And so imagine now agent technology coming on, augmenting human capability, and then new apps coming in and app creation that leverages supercomputing. So now we're all going to have access to these supercomputers. So we, we believe that this will change the application frameworks in today's fintech. Okay, the ability to integrate, share data. So you know, as we look at this market, financial services, you got to like, there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers. And if you're not leaning into AI, I mean, when, when platform shifts happen, you don't, you can't lean in halfway. What, what, what gotta, analogy, you go yeah. all in or you're extinct. What analogy you, that works for New Yorkers, at least, John, we all, we all jump on a train in the morning and yeah. come into the city. If you're standing on the platform and you're not on the AI train, the train's moving really fast. And it's, it's just, when it goes by, you know, it's incredibly fast. It's hard to keep up with it. But when you're sitting on the train, you don't notice how fast it's going because you're participating. You're learning. You're developing AI literacy. You're experimenting. You're building solutions for your, your customers, both external and internal. And, uh, and the leading firms, the ones that come to see us in Santa Clara, and by the way, everyone should come to see us in Santa Clara. They should schedule an executive briefing. Uh, when they come to see us, they've decided, the, the companies that come to see us have decided, we're leaning in, we're going to be leaders yeah. in this, we're going to be the survivors. Cap Gemini did a study in 2017. Uh, it, it looked at the Fortune 500 in 2001 and who was left standing in 2017. Uh, more than 50% of the companies that were in the Fortune 500 in 2001 were gone. That, that era, that 17 years, you saw internet, you saw uh, mobile, you saw cloud, but none of those, they, yeah. they were moving at a glacier pace compared to how fast yeah. generative AI is moving in, and in, and in yeah. financial services, it's no different. Yeah, I totally think you're on point there. In fact, we use a lot of sports analogies on the cube here. It's like the, the pace of play between Little League and Pro Ball. <laughs> it's like, I mean, the pace of play at AI right now is really fast. So right. um, companies are adapting. And, and if they don't, I mean, they're going to be on the wrong side of history. So as we get into this world, old way, new way, okay, your relationship with AWS is well documented. Um, also well documented in what you guys are doing separately from Amazon um, and, and off on, on premise, which is you know, booming. Uh, all these specialty clouds are emerging, which we see things to be the future. At the end of the day, it's cloud operations. Um, Amazon might not see it that way, but AWS has a great relationship with NVIDIA. Talk about the relationship with oh AWS. My, uh, uh, so uh, Jensen said it best at reInvent in November. Uh, we've had a 13, Jensen and, and Adam said it best on stage during, uh, during uh, reInvent back in November. We've had a 13 year relationship uh, of collaboration with AWS. First of all, take a step back. AWS is obsessed with custom, improving customer outcomes. And NVIDIA is obsessed with solving really tough problems. So we're very well aligned yeah. from a cultural perspective. And uh, when you think about uh, just our Ampere and Hopper, Ampere AWS calls yeah. PD4s, and Hopper they call them PD5s, and they're available in their EC2 instances and have been for years. Uh, just those two alone, we have over, they've invested in over 2 million 
GPUs in their cloud. That is an enormous investment for their customers. So if I'm a financial services firm and I have to decide, do I build on my prem in my data center? I have to over provision for yeah. peak. And there's power and challenge. And there's a lot, well, a lot of data centers are old, so yeah. that's an issue. Or do I just fire this up in Amazon? And so they have that opportunity because Amazon's made it available. And they've, and they've taken the risk. Uh, they've, they've taken the approach of if I build it, they will come. Um, but that's a good but, bet, by the way. The cap on the capex side, they got a lot of horsepower and firepower there for customers. Exactly, and you know. But since then, at, at it reinvent, and then again at GTC, Jensen and uh, Adam kicked up our relationship yeah. several notches. They announced SIBA. SIBA will be one of the largest supercomputers based on DGX Cloud, uh, and. Uh, SIBA, by the way, is the largest tree in the Amazon rainforest, so appropriately named. A massive supercomputer in AWS's cloud. And our R&D team will use it. We'll use it for advancing uh, AI for robotics. We'll use it for our Earth 2 digital twin and, and climate predictions. We'll use it, and by the way, very relevant in financial services. We'll, we'll use it for our uh, Omniverse yeah. platform. We'll use it for so many different things. Um, and in addition to that, we're integrating our NIM, our NVIDIA Inference Microservice, with SageMaker. In, NVIDIA Infer, uh, Inference Microservice is us taking, essentially, a, a, an open source model, encapsulating it in a Kubernetes container with the inference runtime, the model, and CUDA. Yeah. And essentially, now you have a portable model that's optimized to run on our platform. Maybe think of it this way. If you're... Uh, if you're a dad, you know this. You've got a home, you've got kids, they leave the windows open, they leave the lights on, drives every dad mad. They run around, turn everything off. What we're doing when we optimize these models is we're turning off parameters that aren't, need, aren't needed. So that saves money in training time, that saves money in inference time, that saves money in the entire pipeline and life cycle, or uh, AI uh, pipeline. And so NVIDIA inference microservices with SageMaker allows Amazon's customers to build their own AIs, to own their own IP, and now you're, you're multi-cloud portable. Yeah, and it's interesting, I use the word AI factory, which is you guys going, Dell jumped on the bandwagon there too, which basically I thought was a great move on their part. But in AI factory, it doesn't have to be a physical location. The cloud is a big part of, of, course. of these AI factories. NIMS are components, you connect Absolutely. together. Yeah. So we're gonna be living in this connected new system. I ca call it this new AI world we're living in. It's a collection of systems working together. Absolutely. That's an NVIDIA also vision. Today, today in financial services, probably less than 15% of workloads run in cloud. There is still a huge amount of tech debt in financial services. You have these systems, you know, some, some, some financial firms, data centers look like the Smithsonian. They have one of everything mm -hmm. from every decade. And I've heard people describe their infrastructure as uh, like the layers of the earth. You can go and see exactly what decade was this technology yeah. bought in. Uh, as generative AI changes the way software is developed and empowers financial services firms to now write new uh, generative uh, software, you're going to see more and more of this probably running cloud. Yeah, and I, I will say, and to agree and put an exclamation on that point is, is that the winners have to deliver the consumer experience because generative AI is a new categorical experience. That's right. That's obvious as the world in front of us. And if you're not showing that new capability, you're out. You're out. You're, I mean, you, you literally, yeah. like the consumption won't be there. Fortune 500 list, like 2001, yeah. 2017, <laughs> 55, 50% plus Again. terms are gone. <laughs> as, the, as the fog lifts in this new era, you can start to see the old way, new way, and the new way is that if you're not getting it here, you're going to be out of business. I mean, that's it, what's it, happening. And, and, and you know, it, financial firms have to be careful, John, because they're heavily regulated. Uh, and generative AI is still relatively new. So they don't have to rush things into production, but what they do need to be doing is building an AI factory in cloud or on-premise or both. You can build a hybrid AI factory and they need to be building AI literacy across their organizations and uh, taking the fear out of their people who think this is gonna take their jobs. Jensen made a great yeah. observation a year and a half ago and you hear everyone repeat this now. You're not gonna lose your job to AI. You're going to lose your job to somebody who's learned how to use yeah. AI. Yeah. And then you're going to lose your job by not leaning into AI right and jumping on the train. Malcolm, great to have you on from NVIDIA. Laying it out, I mean, NVIDIA leading the way 
Glimpse into the future is here. We're bringing you all the data here in New York City with theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Of course, we're going to tokenize the data. We're going to make it generative. <laughs> Hope you had a good, good conversation. Thanks for coming on. Great to be here with we'll you. We'll be right John. back after this right. short break.